Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Waggett's math class. We will continue talking about linear functions. Uh, first, let's review what we already know about linear functions. Linear functions, when graphed, they make a straight line. We also learned that the slope between any two points on the graph is the same using the rise over run. Watch how you go up one, left two, up one, left two, up one, left two, you still land right on the line. Another name for the slope, we already know what that is, it's called a rate of change. For today's lesson, how can you decide whether the function is a linear function or nonlinear function from a graph, table, or an equation? Here's an example. Which graph represents a linear function? Remember, the word linear means creates a straight line, as long as that line is non-vertical line. So look at this example. If you connect those dots, does it make a straight line? It did. So this relation is a linear function because it created a straight line. Now look at the second example. Do you have a straight line? No, the line curves, so this graph represents a nonlinear function. Now from a table, does the table represent a linear or nonlinear function? Explain. Here's three tables. Remember, linear functions have a constant rate of change, and a rate of change is another name for the slope. So here's the first table, let's discuss that one. And the slope is the change in y divided by the change of x. Is that slope constant? Is the change the same between two points? So let's see the change in y is from 3 to 6 to 9 to 12. That is an increase by 3. And the change of x from 2 to 5 to 8 to 11, that's also an increase of 3. So the slope is the 3 over 3. There is a constant rate of change because it's the same between any two points. As y increase by 3, x also will increase by 3. So it is a linear function. Now let's discuss the second table. Same thing. We need to find out if it has a constant rate of change. That means, is the slope the same between two points? The change in y from 1 to 3 is adding 2. From 3 to 7 is adding 4. From 7 to 11 is adding. Now the change of x from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 is subtracting 1. Now let's see if the slope between two points is the same. Does it have a constant rate of change? There isn't a constant rate of change. Therefore, it's a nonlinear function. Here's the last example, also a table. To find out if it has a constant rate of change, that means to find out the slope. And the slope is the change in y divided by the change of x. The change of y from 7 to 4 is subtracting 3. From 4 to 3 is subtracting 1. From 3 to 0 is subtracting 3. Now let's see the x. From negative 4 to negative 1 is adding 3. From negative 1 to 0 is adding 1. And from 0 to 3 is adding 3. So is it the same? Let's find out. If I divide the change in y divided by the change of x, you get negative 3 divided by 3 from the first point, and the second point is negative 1 over positive 1. Are those two numbers equal? Are they the same? Yes, if I divide them, I get negative 1, so it does have a constant rate of change. Therefore, it is a linear function. Now let's discuss equations. Does the equation represent a linear or nonlinear function? Here's four examples to choose from. Remember, linear equations are written in slope-intercept form, where y equals mx plus b. Remember, the y is isolated on one side by itself, and the x is to the power of 1. And it's on the numerator, and I will discuss what that means soon. Let's start with this first one. y equal x over 4 minus 3. Can I write this in a slope-intercept form? x over 4 is the same as 1 fourth x. So I did write it in slope-intercept form. Therefore, it's a linear function. So if x is a non-numerator, that is a linear function because you can split the fraction in the x. Now the second one, y equals x to the power of 2 plus 1. Can you write it in a slope-intercept form where x is to the power of 1 and y is isolated? 
No, X is to the power of two, so cannot be written in slope and intercept form. Therefore, it's a nonlinear function. Now, this one, Y equals three over X minus one half. Watch how the X is in the denominator. So you cannot write it in a slope intercept form, nonlinear function. The last one, y equals 17, if we remember that, that's a horizontal line crossing the y at 17. So it can be written in slope intercept form because the slope is zero. So you don't have x, which is fine, but y is isolated equal to number. That's a horizontal line crossing the y at that number. So it is a linear function. Here's the last example. For today's lesson. The table shows the cost y in dollars of x ounces of cereal. What is the missing y value that makes the table represent a linear function? Remember, what makes a table a linear function is a constant rate of change or finding a pattern. So we need to find a pattern for the y, a pattern for the x. Watch how the x from 8 to 12 to 16 is increased by 4 and the y from 2.5 to 3.5 it increased by 1. So I need to keep that pattern going. If I go backward, instead of adding one, it'd be subtracting one to find that question mark. So subtract 2.5 minus one is 1.5. So what makes this table a function is the y value of 1.5. What is the missing y value that makes the table represent a nonlinear function? So do not follow the pattern. Use any number that does not equal 1.5. For example, $1 for the Y. So we'll use any number, as long as that number is not 1.5, because the 1.5 will keep the pattern. Write a linear function that represents the cost Y of X ounces of cereal, interpret the slope. So to write the linear function, it's Y equal MX plus B, find the slope, find the Y intercept. To find the slope, which we already did, it is the change in y divided by the change of x, 1 over 4. So replace m with 1 fourth x plus b. Now I need to find b, which is the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, use the table to go back where x equals 0, find the y. So go backward. How do I make the 8 equal 0? You go backward 8 times, so you subtract 8. And that takes you to x equals 0. Now for the 1.5, instead of going to the left one time, I need to go to the left two times, so subtract two, that gets you to negative 0 0.5. So the b, or the y-intercept, is the value of y when x equals zero, I found that negative 0 0.5. So write this in the equation, y equal 0 0.25x minus 0 0.5. Interpret the slope means explaining the content of the problem, which means Write the slope as a fraction, the change in y divided by the change of x, and the y is the, uh, the dollar amount of 0 0.25, which is a quarter, divided by 1, which is the x ounces. So to interpret, use the word per, every, or each. It costs you 25 cents per one ounce. In conclusion for today's lesson about linear functions, if it's graphed, they have to create a straight line and if it's from a table, you have to have a constant rate of change or a pattern. And from equation, you will be able to write it in slope intercept form for it to be a linear function. Otherwise, it's a nonlinear function. That's it for today's lesson. Thank you for watching.